Hello everyone, Professor Cannon here. I would like to talk to you about the essay by Michaela Collington, Does Texting Affect Writing? It is in your They Say, I Say textbook on page 361. So this entire essay is about whether or not text messaging does affect millennials ability to write well in a formal setting. Let's talk about the structure of her essay, the purpose of the essay, and her anticipated audience, as well as her anticipated objections to her argument. So her essay begins in all caps with the saying, it's taking over our lives. If I was in the classroom, I would try to get you to discuss why this is in all caps, but we're not in the classroom, we're doing this via video. So let me just say, is in all caps because if you were texting somebody, this would be like screaming, you would be like really excited. And so she's trying to blend text language with formal academic writing just to make a point to give it a little bit of style. Now she's also anticipating her audience and she anticipates the fact that it's not going to be just millennials who are reading her text. So she explains, defines, what text language is, what text messaging is, and what text speaking is. So you need to be sure that you can pick out the different types of example writing and definition writing so that you're able to implement that into your own essay writing. So that's all on the beginning of 361. Let's turn the page and this is where the structure of her essay begins to shine. You can flip through the pages of this essay and you're going to find different sections to it. The first one is concerns about text speak. The next one is responses to concerns about text speak. The next one is methods, followed by discussion of findings, and then followed by her conclusion, notes, and works cited page. So to begin with her concerns about text speak, she opens up with a 2008 article in the USA Today entitled Texting, Testing Destroys Kids Writing Style, summarizes many of the most common complaints about the effect of texting. So here she's introducing the continuum of opinion. Now remember, you're always supposed to start with what others say about argument, move through the middle ground, of the discourse regarding that argument and then introduce what you as a writer have to say. So this obviously is not her thesis. So she's gonna take the opposite of this, which is the reason I assigned this essay because I really appreciate the fact that somebody writes about millennials knowing how to write well. So she uses USA Today and then after that she introduces Naomi Barton she says, Naomi Barton, a linguistics professor at American University, blames texting for what she sees as the fact that so much of the American society has become sloppy and laissez-faire about the mechanics of writing. And then she lists examples like using the number two for the word two, and using GR numeral eight for the word great, and LOL for left out loud, and DAT for the word that, and etc. So she's doing some example writing to help her audience understand what she's trying to communicate. In the first full paragraph on page 363, you see a subclaim. Many also complain that because texting does not stress the importance of punctuation, students are neglecting it in their formal writing. So she's saying, hey, look, the people on the they say part of the continuum, this is what they're saying about students. And so then she pulls in some research and she discusses it. But at the bottom of that page of 363, the last four sentences, she says, according to these teachers then, texting is inhibiting good writing. However, their evidence is limited based on just a few personal experiences rather than on a significant amount of research. So she acknowledges what the people have to say and then she flat out disagrees with them, and then she states a, per, a persuasive reason on why she disagrees with them. And she continues with uh, supporting this when you turn the page to 364 in response to concerns about text speak. 
So now she's moving away from people who are totally opposite of her argument. She's going into the middle ground and moving towards what she has to say. At the beginning of that page, in response to these complaints that texting is having a negative impact on student writing, others insist that texting should be viewed as beneficial because it provides students with motivation to write, practice in specific writing skills, and an opportunity to gain confidence in their writing. Then she introduces scholars Sternberg, Kaplan, and Bork, as well as David Crystal. And she demonstrates to you as the reader what they have to say about the topic, what research they have uh, concluded about the topic, and she works it into her own argument as support. And if you turn to page 365, the last paragraph in that section before she begins the next one, she says, it's a way of speaking that is a language in and of itself. Crystal, among others, see this language evolution as a positive effect of texting. He seems, in fact, fascinated that teenagers are capable of creating such a phenomenon, which he describes as the latest manifest manifestation of the human ability. David Warlick, a teacher and author of books about technology in the classroom, would agree with Crystal. He believes students should be given credit for inventing a new language ideal for communicating in a high-tech world, quoted in Carrie. So what she did right there is she defended the fact that millennials know how to write, which is actually her thesis. She uses voice markers and signal phrases to indicate who's speaking and what they're saying. And she acknowledges that she pulls a quote within a quote from another source. This is a QTD, and we will be looking at this more intensely within the classroom. Then she goes to methods. And when she goes to methods, this is where she starts introducing her own type of research, uh, seven students and two teachers. And she makes a concession here in her argument on page 366. It's the first full paragraph, a few sentences down. She says, although the number of respondents was small, I could trust my knowledge of them to help me interpret the responses. So in the classroom, we talked about sometimes you're going to have to anticipate objections about your argument and make a concession. And that's what she did right here. She started conducting her own research, but she knows that this research is not a vast amount. And so she's going to have to acknowledge and make a concession. Hey, look, I know this isn't a large study, but it was a study that I conducted to get me started. And she says, okay, well, since this is so small, I needed to branch out. And then she talks about the findings that she receives as she branches out on her research. And on 367, she goes into a discussion of findings. And that first full sentence says, my research suggests that texting actually has a minimal effect on student writing. It shows that students do not believe text speak is appropriate in formal writing assignments. They recognize the difference between texting friends and writing formally and know what is appropriate in each situation. So there's her thesis. She states it for you. And then just a few sentences below, you're going to see her talking about the experts. Many experts would agree that there is no harm in text speak, as long as students continue to be taught and reminded that occasions where formal language is expected are not the place for it. This is where she anticipates objections to her argument. She says, yes, uh, teenagers are texting. They use text speak every day, but, they know that there is a time and place for it. She's, she's defending millennials and she's defending teenagers and 20 somethings. She's saying they're smarter than what they're being credit for. If you turn the page to 368, she introduces Dennis Barron, a linguistics professor at the University of Illinois, and she pulls in his research and she's using that research for about two pages before she starts moving on to her conclusions, which if I can get the page here to turn to page 370 so that I continue lecturing here. 
If you turn to page 370, it's the last full paragraph, she says, on the basis of my own research, expert research, and personal observations, I can confidently state that texting is not interfering with students' use of standard written English and has no effect on their writing abilities in general. So there's her thesis stated in different words. It's the first sentence of her conclusion, as it should be in an academic essay. It is interesting to look at the dynamics of the argument over these issues. Teachers and parents who claim that they are seeing a decline in the writing abilities of their students and children mainly support the negative impact argument. So that sentence right there summarizes some of her key highlights from her argument. Other teachers and researchers suggest that texting provides a way for teens to practice writing in a casual setting and thus helps prepare them to write formally. So here she's summarizing again more highlights, but do you notice what she's doing? She's outlining that continuum of opinion. Did they say, I say. Experts and students themselves, however, report that they see no effect, positive or negative. Anecdotal experiences should not overshadow the actual evidence. So here's my questions to you. A lot of the students in my classes say, I know when to text and when to write formally. Do you? Or do you have challenges because you text so often that you're unsure how to use punctuation or unsure when to capitalize words or how to spell words? And if you are encountering those challenges, what steps are you going to take to help you overcome them? Well, if you are experiencing issues, I would strongly encourage you to use the resources at the writing workshop. I would encourage you to use your handbook that you're required to read for this class. And I encourage you to visit with me. I'll help you any way that I can. Now remember, you're supposed to be answering the questions after the essay. I'm going to create a link on Brightspace so that everybody can uh, submit their work since I will not be on uh, campus this week. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I hope that the analyzation of the argument has helped prove fruitful for you. Blessings, and I will see you soon.